Good morning. It is 624 a.m. This is episode number four of the Early Birds podcast. And today I have a very, very close friend of mine, uh, a colleague, somebody that grinds even more than me, which is hard to say. We have Rami Jamil, uh, managing partner, executive vice president here at Nextdoor Lending. How are you today, sir? Good morning. Good morning. I'm I'm amazing. It's the morning. It's my favorite time of the day. <laughs> We've been wanting to do this for, for a little bit of time, you and I. So you and me will be doing this uh, a lot, obviously going back and forth, just talking about it. So in regards to your routine, I want to just jump right in. We got 30 minutes. What this is about is basically let's get people motivated to wake up earlier, right? Why should they wake up earlier? What can they do if they're not doing something? And what is your version of early? Because I understand there's people out there that they can't start at six, right? Their jobs are at four or five o'clock, which we need that. We need people working those hours. So what is your routine like? Walk us through how your day starts and what you do and why you're into that mood. Yeah. Um, all really good questions. I would tell you an early start is always important for every role. It's crucial. Now, some might be a few hours early. Some might be one hour early. It just depends. So people always ask why. Why do you get up early? What's the point? Why don't you get more sleep? Why don't you stay up later? Why don't you go to the gym or, you know, uh, which there's nothing wrong with going to the gym, but why don't you do other extracurriculars instead of just go to work? And it's it's something that I've talked about a lot. It's, it's about being proactive or reactive. So what I mean by that is we've got parts of our day where we're just going to react to what happens to us. Things are going to happen. Phone calls come in. We got to pick them up. Um, life happens. Something something goes down, right? Um Kid, 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 kid needs you at home. They're crying. You got to go talk to them. Get on the phone. Um, you know, uh, important things happen at, at, at work, on the job. Something wrong happens. You got to drop what you're doing and you got to go fix it. However, there's so much planning that goes into what we do every day. And to be successful, you have to plan. So what I like to do is make use of my time. In this position, I'm very fortunate to have a lot to do. It's a big business. We have well over 100 employees now. Um, who all depend on us, which is something I don't take lightly and I enjoy. Um, and what I mean by that is, is, is plan their days. There's so much when it comes to their clients who they're going to speak to and making sure their day is more efficient and easier. So tr it, it all comes down to planning, planning my day, helping plan other people's days and go getting to work. It's one of my favorite times, especially because it's quiet and I have that time to focus and it's the morning. And if you get good sleep and you feel well rested um, and you, you've conditioned yourself to become a morning person, which I have, um, and, and I, maybe I've, I've always been this way. Maybe I'm wired this way. Um, but I, I for sure, to answer your question, have not always woken up at three or four in the morning, which is what I do now. And that's early to me. So walk us through that. You know, you said you wake up at three or four and I'm happy you said it. And the reason I'm going to ask this question is because you and I have had it before. But, uh, you know, you said something where it was like, you know, people say, oh, why don't you go to the gym? And you made a joke where you were like, oh, well, obviously, if you go to the gym, it's OK, which it is. Right. But for you, you've taken it so extreme to where, you know, you are up at four o'clock and you're in the office by four thirty five on a regular basis. And you're grinding until nine, ten o'clock, sometimes even later. So for people out there who go, man, maybe that's too extreme. What is your thought process? What is your reasoning and answer back to, to somebody like that? Absolutely. It is extreme. It is absolutely extreme. And my thought process is um, I'm willing to do what others are not willing to do. Um, and I always will be. Uh, and that's, that's going to be the difference maker. Um, I've heard Matt Ishbia say this saying, and I like it. Um, I may not be the smartest person. I know that. But one thing I can control is, is being the hardest working person. You know, I know I can control my attitude. I know I can control my effort. Of course, I can get more. I can get smarter. Surround myself with other smart people. Uh, you know, read. Uh, you know, research stuff. Especially with information, it's everywhere nowadays, right? YouTube and podcasts, which you know I I, I listen to and, and audiobooks. Um, but I know I'm not the smartest person. I know I'm not. I'd like to become the, the smartest, but I don't think I'll ever hang my hat on anything like that. I like to hang my hat on what we can control, and. It's a great feeling. It's the most satisfying feeling when you're truly passionate about something and you want to succeed. Um, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, yeah, right. You'll be it's successful. Awesome. Well, you know, and it's funny. And the reason I, I ask that question is because I think so many people we've had this talk so many times. It's like it's not like we hate you because you, you're not waking up early, right? But it's like, hey, we acknowledge the fact that 
it is extreme. We do know that it's not normal to do this. But to your point, it's like we believe this is what it takes to get to that level of that success, of that level that you want to get to as a human being or that you believe you want to get to. So it's not like it's bad if people aren't up at three, four, five in the morning. But the point is, because you're up that early, you're getting that advantage of being able to plan your day, being able to focus in the morning. Nobody's here. Look, you know, it's 6.30 a.m. and it's it's me, you, and uh, the, the amazing Rami McCall who's, who's over there making sure that the sound and the audio and everything's perfect for us here. But it's just the three of us in the office. And the reason that's so impactful and it's important is because we see the bigger picture, right? We have a purpose. So for those people at home that maybe they don't have that purpose yet, right? The, the 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, even 25, sometimes people at 30, they're not sure they're in a line of work that they even love. So what do you, what do you say to them where it's like, how do I find my purpose around me? I'm not motivated to wake up every day. I don't, I don't love what I do every single day. I know I have to do it to put food on my table, but I'm not, I don't have that motivation. What do you say to somebody like that? I say you don't have to love what you do. You don't. It'd be ideal to love what you do. Um, and, and the reason why I say you don't have to love what you do is because all you have to do is love yourself. If you love yourself and want to be the best version of yourself, you will perform at the highest level at what you do. There are so many things in my day um, in my life that I don't love doing, but I still will do because I know I have to. Um, and it will eventually elevate me to the next level uh, where I can start to pick and choose the things that I want to do um, because I've, I've now earned that. I've now uh, put myself in a position to to scale or delegate or pass on or, you know, have additional options. So you don't have to love what you do. Just love yourself and be the best version of yourself. And that's truthfully, you know, being the, you know, being an executor, uh, getting things done, um, being, you know, the the, the best the best version of yourself right just every single thing that you do from you know kissing your kids good goodbye and good night and you know helping out with laundry to you know working in the office and how you treat one another being that best version will always um, lead you to putting in a ton of effort and well and it's and I, I agree a hundred percent too um, I, I really do and it's it's not like we're saying don't go chase your dreams, right? Because you should chase your dreams if you have the ability to do so. But sometimes it, it takes time to get to your dream. You and I talk about this all the time. You know, we're 31 years old, respectively, and we've been doing this for 10 years. And that grind is constant. I feel like I've been grinding 100 hours a week for the last 10 years, to your, your point, too. And it's like we're building ourselves to get to that point to where we don't have to do that. So don't, don't, don't give up on your dreams, right? But to get to your dreams, just know it's a process. Just understand it takes time and that it's okay that it takes time, but you have to put together a plan, which is what his point is. Do you have a plan to get there? And I'll, I'll tell you right now, for myself and our line of work, you know, we, we always joke about this. It's not like I enjoy writing loans. Um, you know, for you and, my, you and I, we're good at it. We're great at it. Um, it's provided an amazing lifestyle for both of us, thank God, and we're so fortunate. But the bigger picture for us, we have a bigger purpose. It's the people around us. It's growing the company. It's it's coaching. It's mentoring. And we understand that purpose. And so sometimes to get to our purpose, we have to do things that we don't always enjoy doing. Get right, Writing the loans constantly, solving all these different kind of problems when it comes to loan-related questions. We know we're going to be out of that, but we understand that process in between. We got to go through it before we can get to that that point in our lives. So I, I, I agree with you 100%. I believe kind of that's the, the route you were talking about when you're talking about that success and getting there. Is that correct? Exactly. It's a catalyst. You have to look at everything as your launching pad to get to where you want to go. Of course, I, we, we want, I want to have this next door lending to be the number one mortgage company in America, the best tech in America. Everybody's heard of us, all 50 states. Absolutely. But to get there, there are some steps that we got to take in between. They're going to be uncomfortable. Maybe some things that we don't want to do, um, but that's the catalyst, right? Um, you know, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, right? these guys, Bill Gates, they didn't get to where they got to overnight. We've all seen, you know, photos of Bill Gates in their garage with computers, you know, and and it's it's just incredible what took them to their journey. And uh, it, they're regular people, you know, and so are we. And that that's that that should paint vision to everybody out there as to what you can accomplish. Um, Everybody can do whatever they want to do if you're truly focused on it. Well, you know, and it's the, the, a lot of the problem is you just get so much now with social media. And it's funny because, like, 
even for us, we grew up in the 90s and we started entering like that cell phone era right in the 2000s. So we started getting the social media, right? Facebook. I remember high school and you start the YouTube and like middle school and all that starts to come out. But we weren't as privy to it as the kids are today. And the reason I bring that up is so many kids, all they see is these like 24, 25, 26 year olds that that made it big. And they, they think, oh, I can get this instant gratification, too. And so what happens is they think that after putting, you know, two years in of work, they go, oh, woe is me. Like, why haven't I made it? Why haven't I done it yet? I've, I've been two years. I've been grinding for two years. And it's like, that's not the normal. And that's the part that I, I wish people understood more is if it was if it was normal to where the, the way to success was all you had to do was two years of grinding, two years of 100 hours a week. And, hey, here you go. Here's millions of dollars. Every single person would go down that route, but obviously that's not the case or else you'd hear more and more of those stories. So how, how do you think about that mindset to get there, right? And think about you, your journey, and I know that's your story to share. How did you get yourself into that mindset after you realized that, oh, God, oh, shit, it, it's, not, it's not a year or two of grinding. I'm, I'm five years into this, and this isn't going to stop. How do you get your mindset there? What did it take to get into that spot? So... That's a really good question. And when I think about that, the first thing I think of is faith. You got to have faith. You have to have belief. Um, and you have to have belief before you see it. Um, and for me, where my mind's at, I'll go for 20, 30 more years if it takes that long. And with a mindset like that, when you're executing and you're, you're doing it at the highest level um, and you take every day seriously and you're clear-minded and you're working on growing yourself, it more than likely will happen sooner, but you got to be so bought in that you're willing to take it to the end to where you've got no gas left till your life's over. Um, that's the commitment that you've got to have. You know, when you, you look at the the best athletes and, and now I, I like to watch basketball and I love basketball. It's my favorite sport. And uh, I, I get these reels on Facebook and these guys now they're like five, six, five, seven. I remember growing up like Muggsy Bowes was like, wow, right. He could dunk. He was five, six. And I thought maybe one day I could, right? Never <laughs> happened for me. But um, five five eleven on a good day as well. But but you know these guys are jumping 55, 60 inches. Guys that are five foot eight or you know they've got the rim under their neck. You know the the the, the six minute mile became the five minute became the, the four Owens, minutes. Yeah, yeah. So like you've just got to continue, you know, pushing yourself, getting to the next level. You just have to. Well, you know, um, I I mentioned this a few weeks back where. And it's funny because it's the new generation. And the reason why it's new generation is because they don't put those limits on themselves, right? And I was um, reading a story. It was about Tiger Woods, and I shared this a few weeks back. And basically, Tiger Woods now, the reason he loses more and more than he's ever lost before, Don't I mean, obviously, the other stuff in his personal life. But one of the biggest reasons is these kids that are coming up, they never faced him during his prime. So they're not as afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I, I think about our, our line of work, and I remember you know, going, going into our previous employers or even when we get you know, new people now, and we talk about how many loans we can write. you know, And we always make that joke like, oh, we'll crush you. And then we have our people that, were, that saw us write loans, and they defend us. But the new people, they're like, they're still talking that shit. You know? and, it, and it gets me excited because it is like that new generation. And the reason it gets me excited is like the older I, that we get, I start to think, okay, how do I make sure that I never get locked into those boundaries? How do I make sure that no matter who I'm looking at or competing with, I never look at that person and go, oh, God, I don't think I can beat that person. Because boundaries are all that restrict you as, as a human being, right? Mm -hmm. Your mind is, is literally restricted by boundaries. What makes you push through it? Is it life events? Do you think it's being uncomfortable? Because change for humans is not easy. How do you break those habits? It's, it's, it's not easy. It's a commitment and it's the, uh, it's just the discipline. I, I used to, I used to always talk about the three D's, something I learned. Um, and we'll talk about my story later on at, at one day, hopefully, um, in this podcast, but the three D's desire, discipline, and determination. You really want something. You really want it. You've decided that you want it. You got to put in the, the, the actions every single day and be consistent. How do you keep that mindset running strong? You surround yourself with other great people. The first person I called, you know, and I wasn't planning to, to say it like this in the podcast, but the first person I called when I left my last employer, which I had a pretty, you know, uh, nice job was you, John. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I always say this. I say I've surrounded myself with the best people. 
And I, I've heard, you know, Shaq quote General Eisenhower said, I'm not I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not smart. What makes me smart, though, is having other smart people around me. So if you surround yourself with a group of winners, um, you just it just becomes infectious. And then you just rub off on one another and you want to be better. They want to be better. And, and, and it's a it's a special thing. It's a very special thing. Well, and we taught, you know, it's funny. Well, first of all, thank you. But, you know, we've talked about this, too, where you have to be able to surround yourself with those winners not be afraid to, and also the biggest piece is not let your pride get in the way because, you know, you might get surpassed at some point for a short period of time, and you have to be able to to let that ego go, myself included, right? We've had this talk so many times where, okay, is this person doing a better job than me right now? If the answer is yes, okay, that's okay. You should be happy for that individual, right? Now, you also can't have that ego where you get salty, you get upset, but it should motivate you. It should inspire you. So make sure the people around you inspire you the right way, the right way. That's that's what's so important. There's so many wrong ways to inspire somebody through greed, right? Through just animosity. That's, that's someone gets inspired, right? A chip on their shoulder. No, you want your people around you to be constantly wanting you to improve all the time. Regardless of, of what you guys have between each other, you're genuinely happy for that person. That's the kind of people you want around you. And I can I can tell you right now, that's exactly who you are, right, to, to me. And I hope the same way to you where we have that. I am happy for you. Do we get competitive? Hell yeah, we do. Do I like if you can fix something if I can? Of course not. But am I upset that you did? No. And, and vice versa. Does it still you know get me riled up? Of course it does. But at the end of the day, I'm still happy for your success. And people really got to understand that. And that's that's the difference between true friendship to me, and 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 not. People really disguise that very well on what true friendship is. They don't even know how to have that conversation. And that's a big piece that I believe we're constantly missing all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, you you hit it on the nail. You hit the nail on the head. Um, you got to lift each other up. You have to lift each other up and, and, and really have that care factor. How do you find that? Who is that person? Um, you, 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 what you put out, you get in, right? So if you put that out, you're going to naturally attract people like that. Um, and that takes discipline to not, you know, have the, you know, the envy and the jealousy and the, you know, the chip on the shoulder, like you said, and, and really, really just, you know, want the best for everyone, regardless of what your preconceived notions are of them. Uh, but you start you start letting putting that out there, and that's the way you you act. Those people will come around you, and those that that aren't that aren't fully genuine, they'll fizzle away. They just will naturally. Oh, you know, um, one of the things I want to talk about is the the uh, optimist creed, mm. right? Um, something that your your dad was a big believer in that you've you know brought in here, and you talk about quite a bit. And I know you work hard to to get there, but can you can you talk about what it is? The optimist creed is beautiful. So it's. Uh, it's pretty much 12, you know, phrases, you know, I promise myself. And then it's, you know, a few different lines to be so strong that nothing can, you know, um, uh, change my state of mind, right? To promise myself to treat all people um, with respect, no matter what, you know, it's just all great virtues. And the Optimist Club is uh, near and dear to me because my dad was part of it for almost 30 years. He joined as a young man. It is more of an older club for those of you that aren't familiar with it. It's like a Lions Club. There's they're more a little bit more popular, um, but they, there's a lot of give back to the community, and um, it's just it's just such a special thing to see a group of people that get together every Wednesday or every other Wednesday at 7, 7.30, and all they're talking about are, are what we can do for the children, what we can do for the city, what we can give back. They're all business owners. They're uh, school, they're lo local municipality officials and teachers and whatnot. And um, it's just all about just compassion, kindness, giving back, care. Like it just, it, and it feels so good. And it feels so good to do it um, and to be part of something like that. And um, I really believe there, you know, when you have, uh, we all have, I really believe we all have a lot of, we're born with a lot of love in our heart. I really believe that. I believe that's the way God created us. And the more you are around people like that, the more of that that comes out of you. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful uh, organization that has principles that, you know, apply to life. And we all know, but the fact that they recite it you know, they're very consistent with it. Um, it's, 
you know, it's it's hung up a, a plaque in my office. You, you know? know, well, that's why I wanted to bring it up because I, I think you work so hard to constantly keep that mindset right in the in the, in the right place. And I think we all do. Um, and that's that's something that isn't talked about a lot because I think what you get all the time is, you know, it's and it's always like bullshit where it's always, oh, is this person always that happy? Are they always that excited? And some people think it's bullshit and some realize that it's it's not. It's actually true. Um, and the, the thing I, I've understood about mindset is I'm realizing now that it is controllable and it's OK that I have days that are off, but it's about how I bounce back from the days that are off. I, I can't be in that state of mind for, for too long. And we've talked about it so many times, you and I, you know, when we walk in the office or uh, you don't look good, you don't look right today, something's off, you know, no smile on your face, or you, hey, you look agitated, you look irritated. And we, we take it to heart because we respect each other, right, and we want to come back and bounce back. What are some tips and tricks that you have to put your mindset back at ease? Ooh, that is a tough one. Yeah. And it is okay to feel that way. And it is going to be normal. And there will be times where you're not, you know, the best you. Um, and that's called being human. And just like you said, it's about understanding it, being very self-aware. That's number one. Step one, introspect, be self-aware, be empathetic. Think about how you're making other people feel. Don't just, you know, be a pushover and only do things to please people, but truly think about how you're making other people feel. Um, take a step back. Uh, meditation is a big piece. I do I do box breathing oftentimes when I get anxiety or stress because I get a ton of it. Um, and box breathing is, you know, breathing in, mm -hmm. let's say, five to seven seconds, holding five to seven, exhale five to seven, and then repeat. So I'll do that for a little a period of time. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is, you know, I, I'm not going to say muscle through it, but you're just going to have to get through it. That's part of life. You know, part of life is, is, is to is to be difficult, to be challenging. Like That's what it was meant to be. You, you have to, you know, uh, as they say, and this isn't a religious podcast, but, you know, God doesn't put a cross uh, heavier than you can bear, you should be walking with. And that is what makes us stronger in life. That is what makes us, and at the time when you're going through those challenges, it doesn't feel like you're going to get stronger from that. It really doesn't. But when I look back at every struggle, and I've had some serious struggles that have, you know, put me out of commission for some time, I'm grateful for it. I wouldn't change it. I'm glad I went through it. Do I want to go through it again? No. If I have to go through it again, would I? Sure, because I know what I've got to do, and I know what's on the other side. I I, I love that. Um, it's kind of that just you know put your head down and hustle mentality. And I I will I will share one thing. You know, um, here's a way to change your perspective when you're thinking about life. It's so important to, to think about this stuff. How naive are we as human beings to believe that we're allowed to go through this life? without any difficulties why do you earn that ability or why do you believe you've earned that ability the reality is we haven't none of us have there are some people who get lucky and by all means god bless you i'm so happy you're put in that spot but for a lot of us a majority of us just remember you don't deserve anything that you have you literally have to earn it day by day and that shit is not easy so think to yourself every single day, how naive am I to believe that this life is supposed to be easy for me? And I always have that mindset constantly. Whenever I'm feeling down, whenever I'm upset, I never think, woe is me. Because think about the history of, of humanity. Think about the history of what we've done. Am I the only person that's ever gone through this? Am I the only person that's ever had this feeling before? Am I the only person that's ever felt this way? The answer is no. And so when I get my brain to start thinking about all of that stuff, writing in thinking about other people, that's perspective. And that's what's so hard to change about human beings is perspective. Everyone believes the grass is greener on the other side. Mm. Oh, the grass is greener. The grass is greener. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. At the end of the day, you water your own damn grass. Make it grow wherever the fuck you are. Mm -hmm. Make it grow. Or else, what else are you going to do? You're going to wake up every day and be miserable and look at yourself and say, oh, well, oh, maybe, maybe something will happen today. Maybe something, nothing's going to just happen. Figure it out. If you're not one of the, the lucky ones that, that catches a break and you're inheriting all this money or, but that's, by the way, not a bad thing to inheriting all the money just depends on what you do with it. 
I know amazing, amazing human beings that have been inherited everything that they have, mm. but they're wonderful. They're incredible. They still bust their ass. They focus on the community. They give back. Some of the most beautiful, incredible people I've ever met. Now I met the vice versa. So it doesn't matter if that's the position you're in. Whatever position you're in, these are the cards that you're dealt. So make the best damn hand. Yeah, I mean, it's like that uh, that saying, you know, uh, Either there's a mindset of, of life happens to me or I happen to life. Oh, man, I love that. You know, and that's and that's that's that. that's my mindset on it. And that's what it has to be. And, you know, to your point, um, to your point, like, I'm also not naive enough to think that, like, look how fortunate I am to be born in this century. Like, wow. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, how awesome are things like how luxurious and convenient is life that, you know, I, 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 I start to once in a while, you know, and you know me how I am with the A.C., you know, yeah. it gets over 70 degrees. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I remember spending time for two years. I didn't have air conditioning, you know, and I was living in a very warm climate. And now it's like, you know, I'm not naive to that fact. I'm not naive to how privileged and, and lucky and, you know, fortunate. And, you know, I, I, you ha that mindset, whether you've earned it or not, is just as crucial. It's equally crucial because that mindset of gratitude that keeps you there, that keeps you level. Because when you lose that, you lose that level, and you may start making different decisions and approaching life differently. I I I, I think that's spot on, you know. And I'm I'm smiling about it because we we always make those jokes, you know, with like the units here, or, oh, we're bougie or this and that, and you know, people don't realize like the last ten years, and we have so much more to give. But there are certain things that we've earned, you know. There are certain luxuries that are are important to me now, and I'm not saying that I couldn't live without them because that's a lie, right? Could I live without them? Of course I could, but it's a matter of this is where I've set myself up to be in the spot to where I can have certain luxuries, right? Like two cars, for instance. Mm -hmm. That's I understand that's a luxury to be able to do that, uh, but that's something that I've always wanted, you know, and I've earned it to get to that place. And it's nothing wrong with that. It's setting goals to, to earn and get to where you want to be. Now, that doesn't mean I wasn't an idiot uh, early on in my, my career, in my life, and spent a little bit of money that I shouldn't. So the, the last question I want to talk to you about uh, before we, we get out of here today is is about that. So there's folks out there that did do well early on, uh, like like me and you were in our early 20s. You know, we were making, thank God, constantly six figures. And they made some bad choices. Um, <laughs> I know I did. And what what ha how, do you, how do you get them out of that funk, right? Uh, someone like yourself – you're talking to them, you're mentoring them. They come to you and they say, Rami, listen, man, like, I know we were doing well. I know the market was amazing, but I didn't save any money, brother. And now the market's getting worse. My mindset's screwed. Maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. How, how do you have that conversation with somebody about, okay, let's buckle up. Where do you start? Well, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying I've, I've never made any mistakes or wasted any money. <laughs> No, that's a lie. Um, I've wasted a lot of money, and that's a great conversation to have because we we, you meant, we talked about something just a minute ago, and it was perception, right? It was your perception. So now there is a different perception. Now I have a different experience. I know what it's like to have had it and to what it's like to have lost it. So there's going to be a newfound appreciation for when I earn it. Everyone's journey is different. Look, every day is a clean slate. You know, tomorrow I could I could not wake up. Right? I could not wake up, and all that money could not have mattered. And that's the mindset that we need to have. And ultimately, when you start making all that money, although it's very nice um, and it will give you a lot of the luxuries you want, it's not going to be your number one focus. What we talked about, especially initially, the first topic we talked about, growing yourself, right? your actual self, like growing as a human being and becoming the best version of yourself every single day, that will get you there. Money is just a side effect. It's just a part of that, right? It's you, right? It's you. And then everything else happens because of you. You are the problem. You are the solution. You are everything. You're the catalyst for every single little feature of your life. Um, so yeah, it sucks, right? It's still not just a positive, optimistic conversation. Like, yeah. Hey, I'm so glad, you know, we're going to, we're going to turn the, turn the corner here. Um, so it's, it's more of a serious conversation, but you've got to flip the box and have that perspective. Um, uh, because, I'm grateful for the bad decisions I've made. I, I, I'm certain I could have hundreds of thousands, if not maybe seven figures more, uh, if I didn't, you know, make some of some decisions to just, you know, spend money um, at a high clip. Now, thankfully, we've saved a little bit, 
So things are okay. But I'm glad for that because now I, I, I've grown. I've got children now. I, I've, I'm a little bit wiser. I'm able to guide them. I'm able to guide my friends, my family, the people that look up to me. So it's, it's, it's a difficult conversation. It's one where you are serious, but it's one where um, I believe if the person is, you know, on the other side is truly committed to, uh, to, to doing this or whatever it is that they're doing, that it, they, they'll come out even better because now they have that perspective. Mm-hmm. I, I agree 110%, and I appreciate you sharing all of this uh, with us. And, and listen, for those, those at home, the Early Birds podcast, this is just about improving yourself, waking up a little bit earlier, doing a little bit more. And the premise of this conversation today is self-reflecting and taking responsibility. Look at your own backyard. What have you accomplished? What have you done? And do you look at it and go, I don't need to do any more. I've done everything I absolutely could. Or hopefully you look at it and go, you know what? I have so much more to give, and that's exactly what you should do. Rami, thank you so much, sir, for joining the show this morning. I know you and I are going to have many more of these conversations, but I appreciate the hell out of you. Let's get back to work. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, sir. Great success.